Hello and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To all new subscribers, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining the Master's Voice YouTube channel. And to all, all old subscribers, you're also equally welcome. Uh, before I go any further with today's message, it's, I even regret that I have to say this, but I think it needs to be said because I'm a person who I believe in order, you know, and I believe that, um, understanding the right use of a thing obviously helps you to use a thing rightly. So I've said often in the videos that I started this YouTube channel at the Lord's request to, in an attempt to modernize the blog. Uh, and from the feedback that I've been getting, it's been very useful. People find it very useful to see a face attached to the often very stern and um, sometimes even scary prophetic words that are on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. So you can find out more information about what the blog is. If you, if you look in the description box, I'll drop some links today, like the Prophecy page, and the basics page, which gives you more information about what it actually means to be a child of God, what it actually means to be born again. And um, I'll drop the link for the about page there so you can know more why and what the blog is about. And obviously the welcome page. But I think before I go any further with today's video, because um, order is necessary, God is a God of order. So I've only ever had to do this once on the blog and I've only ever had to do this once on my Facebook page. So I think perhaps it's not so bad if I do this once on the YouTube channel. I have to request that we exercise self-control when we come to this blog. Um, I've come back from Thanksgiving and I've noticed thanks to the notifications that I get from YouTube, I, I, I noticed several disturbing trends that um, didn't bother me so much, but I felt that they had to be addressed. If you are going to come to this blog, this is primarily, this is a service that I'm doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to understand that I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm here at his request doing his work. But what I am not is I'm not your prophecy robot, right? So I'm not your prophecy robot. I'm not here to operate in within any framework of your existing confirmation bias. So if you're coming here with the idea that Celestial is here to either confirm uh, the weight of prophetic words that you've heard from someone else, or you're coming here to see how she differs from someone else, that's something that you're going to have to handle on your own. I would have to ask you, um, to respect the comment section. I came back and I found that people had been using profanity, which I find very interesting. You're a child of God. You're washed in the blood of the lamb. We're all at some different level, right? In the work of sanctification, the Holy Spirit is supposedly working in us to turn us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet a woman that you don't know, i.e. me, comes back to the channel to find this disturbing trend of people being very vitriolic in the comments section, using swear words, profanity, perhaps because the video is about a particular figure or a particular person that they don't like. So they're cursing in the comments section. People are telling me, Get, wrap it up, wrap it up in the comments section. And I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if that's what it looks like this is not Wendy's. This is someone serving the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would check the, the description or the discussion panel, I think of this new YouTube blog, you will see that it actually says that this is also a teaching channel. So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to share the prophecies as the Holy Spirit leads me. I hope that's clear. As the Holy Spirit leads me, I'm going to take the time that is necessary to share the word because I know that there are people who use the blog properly. They don't abuse the comment section of the blog. And I really have to say that I will not accept or tolerate abuse of the comment section here. I will simply remove your right to use it. You can watch the videos. I'm not blocking anybody. I don't even block the spam bots. They're constantly offering me a free girlfriend on this channel. So I'm not blocking anyone. But what you're not going to do is abuse the comment section and make it uncomfortable for me, 
while I'm serving God or make it uncomfortable for other people. Please also refrain from posting entire encyclopedias in, in the comment section. A comment is actually an observation that comes from you, the viewer, about the content you're viewing. So um, with that handled, you know, relatively painlessly, we're going to go to the prophecy for today, which is called The Eagle Will Fall, August 26, 2020. So that was pretty recently. And I got this word when I was on the prayer line. As you might know, um, churches in New York are closed. So in August, I was on the prayer line with church, and therefore I wrote this down real time. And this happens to me a lot, obviously, when I'm in a space where there's prayer, where there's worship, the Lord begins to speak to me so clearly. And I simply jotted this down on my cell phone. So the banner scripture is this. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a habitation for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. And this is Revelation chapter 18 and verse 2. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit said to me was, the eagle will be trampled underfoot, but I will protect my people. I will save my people. The mighty American eagle will fall. And then I saw a picture. I saw um, it was actually a very... Um, painful picture what i saw was the american bald eagle on the ground and it was surrounded by other birds so i could see this eagle they're very distinctive you know with the with the white head and the and the dark brown feathers sometimes they're speckled but this one was literally the one that you would find on american patriotic depictions pictures um the seal that kind of thing it was the classic bald eagle with the gold beak, yellow beak, and the white head. And, and this bird was in the process of being destroyed by other birds. So it was completely surrounded. And there were different types of birds. There were chickens, right? Which, we, as we know, um, if a bird, if it's a bird that we eat, it's not very high up on, you know, the bird life chain. Birds that we eat, chickens, turkeys, you know, they don't rank there. We don't really look at them and think, look at that majestic chicken we don't do that so there were chickens there were ravens there were crows so they were unclean birds exactly as the banner scripture says and there were even regal birds birds that enjoy a very you know um high regard for man birds like hawks and falcons and they had all surrounded to peck and attack this fallen eagle now the reason the eagle was fallen is because its wings had been broken they were bent at very odd angles, right? So very odd angles. And the bird was kind of um, flapping these broken wings against the ground because even though it had fallen and even though the wings were broken, it was still trying to fly. It was still trying to lift off to get, but all it could do was drag itself with these broken wings and the other birds surrounded it and they were pecking at it. They were pecking at every part of this bird and especially going for the eyes. And the sound that this eagle made was so horrible. It was crying out, crying out. But because it could not escape this attack, eventually the eyes of the eagle were pulled out by the other birds and it lifted this bleeding face to me, you know? So these holes, it's quite um, traumatic. And then it bent the head down when the eyes were taken, it bent the head down. And you know, I have to say that even though it was a bird in the depiction, even now recounting this vision, what comes to my mind is the man Samson. When, um, for those who may not know the story of Samson briefly, Samson was appointed by God in Israel to be a judge. And he was known for strength. He was given superior strength by God from the womb. And I think for me, what has already always struck me about the story of Samson is that Samson was a man who continually tested the boundaries that God had set for him. All of us, we understand that the law of God 
Um, and the fear of God is actually what is supposed to keep us as children of God walking rightly before him. We're supposed to honor God. We're supposed to fear God. Not like in terror. You don't want to be in terror of your parents. The fear of God is the understanding and the reverence for God as God. If you are somebody who does not know that God is God, or if you, if you, if you give lip service to God, but you do not live a life that shows that you understand the Godhood of God, the deity, the magnificence of who and what he is, then you will not have the fear of God. And the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. How so? The fear of God is what actually keeps you in check before God. The fear of God is what allows you to honor God's laws, to keep God's laws, to walk in God's ways and to respect him and to know I should not cross here. And for me, the story of Samson is a cautionary tale because Samson is a man who consistently tested the boundaries of what was acceptable in his life. Yes, he was a chosen leader. Yes, he was God's preferred person for the hour. Yes, he had the anointing, even in the Old Testament. That's a story of watching the tangible anointing of God enable one man to do extraordinary things. But in his personal life, Samson could not keep the boundaries. Samson continually tested the laws of God. He kept crossing the line until eventually God declared enough. And one of the tragic characteristics of Samson's destruction is that he was captured and his eyes were ripped out. Many people preach this and say, Samson lost his vision. Samson lost his vision. Brothers and sisters, Samson lost a lot more than his vision. Samson lost his ability to behold the wonder and the glory of God. The scripture is is replete with references that say, oh God, I just want to behold your glory. I just want to be in your temple and gaze upon you. And this is very important because the eyes are one of the most powerful gates in the body. The eyes are one of the most powerful spiritual gates. And this is why, for instance, Job says, I've made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look lustfully upon a young maiden. Job is one of the paragons of righteousness. In scripture and so the eyes are very important what we let into the eyes brothers and sisters enters into the secondary gate another gate that is within us the gate of the heart and what we let into our eyes settles in our heart it can settle into our heart as clean or dirty water and then once that has settled into us we begin to manifest act out and do what we watched. We all know the saying, children learn by watching and then they start to do. Well, even though we're grown up, we're adults, we're no different. The things that we gaze upon, if we're looking at pornography, if we're looking at people lustfully, if we're looking at people jealously, if we're looking at people with bitterness or covetousness in our heart, all these things enter into the body and they defile. So, The vision that opened up this is that the eye gates of the American nation were removed. And not only that, but they were removed through horrible, piercing attacks by birds of all ranks. So if the the eagle is the nation of America, then this vision is depicting a time when from the chicken, from the lowly nation, from the nation that you never thought would dare to come against America, all the way up to the high nations, the masters of the skies, the hawks and the falcons. They will all surround her and they will tear out her eyes and bring her to a position of defeat. So the Lord said, the first thing he spoke about was religion. He said, I will pick and break apart their religious pinnacles, those heights, the temples of glory that they built for themselves. I cannot stand them anymore. These churches are nothing more than sideshows and circuses. I do not know them. I am not with them. And if my holy temple in Jerusalem could be torn down twice, then what is so special about the Church of America that I cannot tear her down and ransack her pretentious treasure houses? Indeed, I surely will do it. 
Every brick will be blown up and they will know how I hated their spectacles and shows. And don't look only at the wealthy pastors. There are more of these cheap imitations of worship houses than you can imagine, both big and small, both known and unknown. Congregations of lies where they gather to please themselves and dance in a frenzy, blaspheming my name with their pageants. I have no part in them. So God is here talking about the institutions of churches, this is, of course, after many, many houses of worship in the United States were already closed down from the first lockdown in March. But he says that he will actually tear down the edifice of false churches because they don't belong to him. And he compares the church in America to the temple in Jerusalem that was torn down twice, once in the sack of Rome and I think the, the first time with King Nebuchadnezzar. And he says that if that holy temple where I had placed my name, if I allowed it to be torn down twice, then what is the church of America that I cannot allow it to be dismantled and to fall? The pastors are not clean and even the congregants simply come to work themselves up into a frenzy of emotion. And brothers and sisters, we see that the church, what the church at large in the United States looks like today it's got the the strobe lights and then the whirling disco lights and then of course you can't have worship without the smoke because at any point during worship what really makes this it good is when the smoke comes out and then you're wondering if Gloria Estefan is going to come out and do rhythm of the night as a backup number so the Lord is saying that these things are pretentious that they're sideshows that um the practices of the way that we should worship him, which is in the beauty of his holiness and which is in spirit and in truth has been greatly corrupted because that now there are so many other components that have just turned the entire process into a circus and his spirit cannot abide there anymore. He went on to say, I have rejected this nation. Her sin is staining the heaven. Her smoke and burning is acrid in my nostrils as the sacrifices of burn day and night to her false idols false gods a nation of american gods and there's a prophecy on the blog called american gods how you can use the blog best is that you look in the search box you'll see the master's voice the the url you click that and then when you get to the blog simply scroll down to the bottom the blue field where you'll see a search box and then in that search box you can look for prophecies by name so in this case you can look for American gods and see what that's all about but you can look for other things too you can put in a search term maybe the name of your country there might be a prophetic word on that country or you could put in by theme things that you're interested in you could put in homosexuality you could put in abortion you can put in america you can put in war you can put in civil war you can put in currency crash and you'll find different topics that you can then peruse at your discretion so the lord says i will scatter their idols and i will choke the life out of america and those gods will perish with her I will silence the trade and the industry. Business and manufacture will fail. Now that's already happening in my neighborhood um, in New York. I shared in another video that more and more when I'm on public transit, I see signs going up that says for sale, for rent. And this is especially in small businesses. They've been hard hit with COVID-19 and a lot of them have closed for good. There are a lot of shuttered businesses across New York City as a whole, even though the bigger businesses, the brand names are not really feeling it, but smaller businesses, a lot of them have sunk and a lot of them are sinking and business and manufacture is indeed failing. I will expose the wicked princes who keep this land subject to their whims. I will strike her corporate giants and bring them crashing down. And then we will see who in America, Babylon, is too big to fail. So we all know this phrase in the corporate world, too big to fail. These are the corporations that are deemed essential for America's um, trade and industry life. You know, Bear Stearns and all the big companies and finance and textile 
in manufacture, Ford, and all these businesses. These are businesses that are seen as too big to fail. So basically, what the Lord is saying here is that when you see the corporate giants starting to file for bankruptcy, I think over the last two years, we've seen the Bank of America, for instance, close down so many branches. Toys R Us went bust. Such a tragedy. That is the passing of an icon that Toys R Us um, went bust. We've seen many, many companies. Sears is struggling if they haven't gone out of business altogether. Same with Kmart. Macy's has been closing down stores. And so when you see the corporate giants starting to shudder and starting to furlough employees and starting to actually just fire them all together, some of them without packages, then you know that the phrase too big to fail is not a phrase that God respects. And he went on to say, how you insult me, you idolaters, you wasters, you who waste the blood of the unborn and the innocence, which is testifying against you. You cut up these children like brisket, but I shall not tolerate it further. So um, this is about abortion. And there's this quick picture of a scalpel going through the arm of a child like tip 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 cutting it into parts um sometimes these children are not um very small when they're shown sometimes they're this big chubby healthy baby that's fully grown uh, a baby that should have come out and been with its parents but is dead and being cut up. So the Lord says, first, I expose the wrongdoing and I will make known the guilty ones. You voted for them. You loved them. You said, give us Barabbas. Now, Christians will understand that Barabbas is the thief who should have been crucified in Jesus' place. Pilate, the governor of um, I think it was Palestine at that time where Jesus and everybody else lived. The Roman governor who was over Jerusalem and who hated his job, by the way, because the Jews were always revolting and making his work very hard. It was a very hard area to govern and, Pal and, and Pilate hated being posted there, you know, because everybody wanted to be posted in Rome. But he had a habit whereby during their religious festivals, such as the Passover, which is when Jesus was crucified, he would bring out a person or two people and then ask the crowd, who do you want me to save? It was, I think it was just a pan to their um, Roman games. Shall I be merciful? Shall I be merciful? So anyway, in scripture, they bring out Jesus and they bring out Barabbas. And you would think that Jesus being sinless and Jesus having done nothing would be the one that they cried out. But because the spirit of lawlessness was at work in these people's hearts and also because the spirit of lawlessness was being used by God to fulfill prophecy. They cried out, give us Barabbas. When he said, should I save this one who calls himself the king of the Jews, Jesus, or shall I save this thief? And Barabbas was a known thief, but they cried out for Barabbas. And God is saying here that you voted for Barabbas. You cried out for these leaders. You love them. Therefore, I will expose your leaders. I will expose your gods. I will expose your pedestals that you worship at and your TV princes. Princes, I will show you their clay feet beneath their stained robes. Now, everybody knows that clay feet or the saying clay feet literally means that you build a statue and you make it of marble, which is very sturdy. But then when you run out of marble, you give it feet of clay. And what that means is that if you strike such a statue or any edifice at its base, because it is not sturdy, it's not made of iron, it's not made of marble, it's not made of something durable, it's made of clay, it will crack and the entire structure will fall. So he says that he will strike the stained feet beneath their stained and filthy robes. He says that they are rapists, they are abominable, they are filthy, they are lovers of children and killers of the brave lovers of children, ladies and gentlemen, does not mean that they love children. It means that they are pedophiles. Whenever the Lord is using this phrase, lovers of children, he's not talking about people who have a soft heart for kids. He's talking about people that like to sleep with little children. A scene 
that I have seen more than any woman should in her lifetime. I have seen grown men crouching over the backsides of little boys, little girls, as people are gathered in a circle, watching the child being sodomized, watching the person being raped. God has said that these children endure so much that until they die, their little hearts are wondering why they were born. Now, children are too small, I think, to be wondering about such deep and existential matters as why am I here? That's stuff that people, grown-ups, wonder about. You know, like, why was I born? What is my purpose? But for a little child to have, to have grasped that life is so bitter and so painful because they live in captivity and they're nothing but a sexual plaything or toy of grown-ups is heartbreaking. So this is something that I noticed that America is waking up in the mainstream to this year because of certain scandals that have come out, such as the Epstein scandal and the capture of Jelaine Maxwell, his madam, and other things like that. And America's finally going, oh, does this really happen? And, and Facebook is now just inundated, at least it was a few months ago before uh, the fact, fact checker Nazis really went into overdrive and started capturing every single video that was exposing the, the human trafficking. But I've been seeing these things for a very lengthy period of time and I shared in one of my videos that when God first woke me up to this I was absolutely horrified because a lot of this pedophilia is di directly tied to rituals, secret societies and that these children are truly a commodity. They are sought out across the continental United States. And sometimes they're even captured from other countries and brought here. And sometimes they're captured from here. And they're flown to other countries to meet the demand for these rituals and this desire to sleep with children. He also said killers of the brave. And this is a reference to capturing, jailing, torturing and killing whistleblowers, people who try to stand up and expose things in different areas, whatever those different areas may be, financial scandals, human trafficking scandals, whatever it may be, these people are caught, they are jailed, they are um, destroyed in the public image, uh, they have false charges apply to their names, um, they have, they have uh, criminal charges planted on them, things planted on them just to destroy their credibility. And a lot of them do not escape with their lives. The Lord says, I will lift up their skirts and expose them and I will expose their nakedness so that even nations that have nothing to do with you will see it. So this is now talking about, um, and he goes on to say, it. I will make you ashamed America. This is definitely shame when other nations can be making pasta and put on the news and say, what? Who was caught for what? This is now telling America that she will op um, occupy a position of shame. I will rip the metals from your neck. I put them there. I made you great, but I will take you from first to last before long. I will shame you and expose your nakedness to the four corners of the world. You shall be an abomination, an embarrassment, a hissing, a mockery. Even the very least will look at you and be amazed. And the great will trample your soil and put an iron yoke around your neck. So this relates to the image that started off this prophecy. Don't forget that we saw the American Eagle surrounded by birds of all ranking, all the way from the chicken and other lower birds all the way uh, to unclean birds, ravens and crows, which are filthy birds. The, the lifestyle that they lead is pretty filthy, but they're not weak birds. They're actually very strong birds. The beak of crows can tear flesh. Uh, crows actually like to eat dead animals. So their beaks, they're carnivores and their beaks are strong enough to tear flesh. And then it went all the way up to high ranking birds like falcons and eagles attacking. So the Lord says that the very least of the nations will look at you and just be like, what is wrong with you? And the great nations will one day trample your soil and put an iron yoke around your neck. 
we come to another characteristic that I have spoken of too many times to count, and so I will not linger here. The Lord says that America will be made naked. Your actual naked sin, skin will be seen by strangers and your children will be slaves. Then you will know that I pleaded with you for my people. You say that it is the past. I, Jehovah, am the Lord. I have no past. I never forget. I am no man. I, Jesus, the everlasting King, never forget. I will not forgive what was done, how blood ran in these streets, how tears flowed in these fields. My people pleaded for mercy and found none. I shall not forgive. You did not forgive. I shall not forgive. At the hour of Jehoshaphat, I, the Lord, will remember you. And the verse that the Lord gave me here is, I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided my land. So the Lord says that he will gather his remnants at a certain time and that the remnants themselves should pray constantly that they would be counted worthy to escape these things. Rinse your robes in the lamb's blood. Adjust your focus. Be actively found doing what is holy, righteous, and good. Put away your foolish distractions and focus your attention on me. Look to me, learn my word, and pray that you will be found worthy to capture, to escape these things. The Lord says, I will gather my remnants from all the places. I will scatter them, but this will no longer be a nation. I wrote this in red because this always comes. America will cease to be a country. She will no more be listed among the countries. As Pompeii was buried and as the Visigoths disappeared, so will she be a footnote in the books of history. I will remove her from before my face. This too is the sovereign word of the Lord. So you can read the rest of the prophecy on the blog, but what God is saying is that America will lose statehood, that it will be eradicated, it will be erased, it will no longer be counted as a sovereign nation, and that her people will be scattered all over the world. Um, I've shared, I think in a previous video, perhaps I did not share, but there was once I saw a very brief vision, I've shared that not everything is long enough to make a post on the blog but many times God will just show me images pictures and things and I saw once that Americans scattered across the world right so they ran away I don't know if this is the rich who the Lord says will surely run away and use their money to deliver themselves or I don't know if this was just ordinary people but I know that as one man the occupants of this nation ran away and I saw that um they came to a country, there was a particular country, it looked like an Arab nation. They came to this country and they handed over the passport. And when the man took the passport and saw the eagle on it, he laughed. He laughed and he mocked them and he said, oh, American, American. And he took this stamp and he stamped in the book, no. He denied entry. So he stamped in the book. No. And what this brought to mind is that many, many Americans, you may not know this, but in, in the consulates that the United States has around the world, when people around the world go and apply for visas, the U.S. has this particular practice that nobody else has. If you go and try to get a German visa, you go and try to get a French visa, Schengen visa, you want to go to Scandinavia, you want to go to India, wherever it is. If you go to the embassy with your passport and you fill out the forms, you pay the money to apply for this visa. If they don't want to give you the visa, they simply let you know that you didn't qualify and they let you know that your visa application was denied. So you get your passport back minus the money and you get told, I'm sorry, you were denied. The United States of America is the only nation that puts a big fat red stamp in people's passports that says denied. So they just get that big fat red stamp and they just go in there right across one or sometimes two pages of the passport. And what this does is 
This instantly turns your passport into a useless booklet and it makes you an undesirable. Once the United States has determined that they're not giving you a visa, instead of just telling you no, they deface your passport. And what that stamp does is that as long as you have that book, no matter what other country you want to travel to, when you present that book with a stamp that says denied, even if the other country is a small country, even if it's Yemen, even if it's, I don't know, Kadesh Barnea, which is just a town in Israel, they will also deny you because the thinking is like lemmings. If America doesn't want this person, why should we let them in? We don't know what they've done. And so that stamp was particularly telling in this in this thing that I saw. This man took a stamp and he stamped in the United States passport, denied. And the man and his wife, whose passports were defaced, were so shocked and demoralized that somebody has the right to do this. But I think that's because most Americans have no idea that their embassies do this globally. So... The last thing I will mention is that I said that I wrote this prophecy verbatim. So I was writing it exactly as the words of the Lord coming into my spirit. And the entire time I was writing this prophetic word down, I saw fire falling from the sky. Now, I said that whether it was meteors or whether it was fireballs or whether it was missiles, um, I don't know. But all I know is that I wrote this prophecy seeing speeding fire bombs like round rocks of fire falling from a dull red backlit and burning sky so the sky was so red because of the fire the amount of fire that was falling and i kept seeing huge balls spinning balls of fire coming down and the lord said that america will be greatly chastised with brimstone and with burning she mixed a cup of abominations for others and soon a double dose will be poured for her to drink. These are the words of the Lord. So I already shared um, a prophecy that quite a few people have seen already. It's called Blood to Drink. If you haven't seen that prophecy, please look among the videos for it or go to the blog and use the search box and find that prophecy, Blood to Drink. It's a very disturbing vision of the Lord that I have. Very lengthy, very painful, the revelations that were in it. Um, the things that people do in this country, that there's cannibalism in this country. Yes, yes. I know many are thinking, no, cannibalism will only start when war comes to this nation. Not at all. People eat other people here now and people even infect and I would say seed. To seed something is to take little bits of something else and put it into, into a larger thing and mix it together so that the little things defile the bigger things. And the Lord um, revealed in the prophecy, blood to drink, that even the normal everyday food in the United States um, is seeded with defiling things. So if you haven't seen that prophecy, please do go and watch it. Uh, this is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please share these videos prayerfully, meaning don't just dump them on people. Some of the content is very heavy and most people are not even aware that this goes on. So pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to show you who in your circle is ready. It doesn't even have to be Christian people. There are some people out there who don't necessarily want to know God. They don't want to fire God. But they're extremely, um, I think, woke is the term. These people know a lot about what's going on. And perhaps when they see these these matters that they know about and they protest and they hate being presented from the Christian perspective, it might encourage them to begin to consider giving their lives to Jesus. This is a time to stay grounded in Christ above all else. This is a time to stop playing games, brothers and sisters. Things are not going to get easier for us. 2021 is not going to be the chipper year that everybody thinks it will be. We're not bouncing back. These people have already started to use terms like the new normal. They are letting you know that the old normal, whatever that is, is absolutely gone. They did not ask your permission. They did not take a poll. They did not interview us in any way. They simply took it away because they have the power to. And at some stage, they're going to present you with the new, new normal. This is merely a transitional phase you need to be making this journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, give your life to Jesus Christ.
There's nothing that you have that is more precious than salvation. So may the Lord God bless and keep you, make his face shine upon you, speak to you in your chamber so that you can know when you're hearing the truth on these videos and also give you peace. God bless you and take care. Bye.